Hello everyone. Mm, if we want to calculate the change of property of state, we only need to know the values of properties at both initial state and final state. So P, I assume P here, uh, indicates any one property of state. Any property of state. And for example, P could be pressure or temperature or internal energy and so on. So then we let P2, that means the property at final state or state 2 minus P1, that means at state 1, and then we get the change of property. Here the change of property. So we don't care how the properties reach their final states. This is a vital characteristic of point function. Point function. That is path independent. So now I'd like to introduce you first the equation of state. And we say a state can be described by its properties and from our experience, we don't need to acquire all the properties to fix state. For example, I have here a container filled with gas A, gas A, and at a given moment, its temperature Ta equals 200 Kelvin, for example, and Pa equals 1 bar, indicate the state of gas in container, right? And we can measure both the temperature and the pressure. Then we can calculate its density by using law of ideal gas, internal energy, and enthalpy can also be obtained. Thus, we can conclude that two properties here, temperature and the pressure, are enough for us to confirm a state. Enough. If only one property is held constant, for example, temperature remains unchanged. But then, if, temp uh, if pressure goes up, we will get other values of density, mm, volume, internal energy, and so on. So in this case, so in this case, one property here, temperature T, is not sufficient to confirm a state. And you see, not all properties are dependent from each other. And the same, not all are independent from each other. So, if mm, we, have, mm, we have two properties, and if we keep the value of one property constant, and the value of the other property can be varied, and we see both properties are independent with each other. So I write down the sentence here. If we keep the value of one property constant, the value of the other property can be varied. So we say these properties are independent with each other. Okay, so in thermal in thermodynamic, we usually need only two properties to fix the state in case of homogeneous system. So therefore, if these two properties can be located as a point on a corresponding coordinate, we call these two properties point function. So if two properties can be located as a point on a, 
uh, uh, coordinate system and their point functions. Okay, for for example, in a temperature. Uh, in a pressure P temperature T coordinate system, if we know the value of pressure and temperature at state one, we can we can then draw the point here T one P one for example it is located here. And if we know them in another equilibrium state two and then we can draw another point. So here's state one, for example, and here is state two. The point is here T two, P two. Here is T one, P one. Okay. And in general, if if we say Y is a property of state. In addition, we have n properties uh, which are independent with each other. Here x1, x2, to xn are independent with each other. So property y can be written in this way. y is a function which depends on x1, x2, x3, to x n, and we call this equation of state. Okay, since the equation of state is path independent, path independent, mm, we can describe the change in y by using a, to a total differential here total differential and we write the total differential in this way dy equals partial f and here partial y over partial x1 dx1 here x2 x3 to xn is constant plus partial y over partial x2 here x1, x3, to xn constant to partial y over partial xn times xn here x1 to xn minus 1. Okay, so this term is partial derivation in x1 direction. Partial derivation in x1 direction. And uh, this part means x1, x3, uh, uh, sorry, x2, x3 to xn. These var uh, variables are uh, constant. So maybe a little abstract. So now I give you an example. I have mentioned that density depends on depends on pressure and the temperature. So therefore, we suggest that density is a function which depends on pressure and the temperature. So we can write the total differential d rho equals partial rho over partial p t constant times the p plus partial rho over partial temperature t p constant times p times d t okay so and because of mm, path independence Mm, the cyclic integral of here, the cyclic integral of dy here is zero. So the cyclic integral of dy 
equals zero. So pay attention. Why here we have mentioned is property of state. That means is point function also means pass independent. Okay. And the cyclic integral is referred to as an integral here, the cyclic integral um, as an integral along a closed path. So it is easy to prove um, why the cyclic integral of dy equals zero. So since the system returns its initial state. So properties at final state are equal to the values at the initial state. So we know that change of properties do not depend on path in pass independent. So we let the values of properties of final state here the property of final state minus property at initial state and then we get zero because the final because the system returns its initial state so here is equal initial state so okay so we get zero here and so this kind of integral, cyclic integral, is not u usually used in math, but plays an important role in thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics, there are, for example, gas power cycles and uh, vapor cycles and refrigeration cycles. Refrigeration cycles and concerning these cycles the system undergoes a closed path and returns to its initial state work is done by uh, work is done by or on the system so later when we deal with this process we should use cycl uh, cyclic integral to solve the problems but actually most closed paths can be divided into several individual paths and for example here the auto cycle consists four process state 1 to state 2 is compression with constant entropy and state 2 to state 3 is heat addition with constant volume V and state 3 to state 4 is expansion with constant entropy and the state 4 to state 1, that means uh, return to its initial state, is rejection, and heat rejection, rejection with constant, with constant volume. So now we can rewrite our cyclic integral into four line integrals for each path. So in the cyclic integral of the uh, of dy is equal to path 1 to 2 dy plus path 2 to 3 dy plus path 3 to 4 dy plus path 4 to 1 dy. So, um, perhaps abstract, but don't be worried. 
you only need to remember that the cyclic integral of property on y equals zero. That is enough now. Later, when we learn the first and especially the second law of thermodynamics, you will know how to use cyclic integral to obtain, um, for instance, Clausius inequality. Clausius inequality. So we will talk about it later. So, and we spent a lot of time talking about point function, path independence, and we have path independence now. So there exists probably probably some kind of function which is path dependent, and that is right. And we call them path function. So, quite opposite to point function, if quantities cannot be located on a graph by a, by a point, but indicated by the area under the path uh, a system undergoes, and we call these quantities path function. So, one is cannot be located on a graph and two but indicated by the area under the path a system and the goals. So um, heat Q and uh, work W are two typical paths function. And later we will know that for a cycle process, for example, I draw here a pressure volume coordinate system. So the system undergoes cyclic process. So the area enclosed by path here, this area, indicates the work which is done by or on the system. So if the system undergoes another process, for example, mm, for example, I change the color here, undergoes another process like this. So we, we get then another area, right? And that means more work is done or, uh, by or on the system. Thus we say integral here in integral cyclic integral or no or integral of delta Q from mm, state one to state two E does not equal to Q2 minus Q1. And we usually write it in this way, Q1 to state 2. So, and similarly, mm, from state 1 to state 2 does not equal to W2 minus W1, but equals to W from state 1 to state 2. So you may notice uh, you may notice that I use here here delta instead of D, right? And so because delta is used to indicate in exact differential and, the, and I return back here, here for example D here indicates exact differential so this is the difference